Welcome to Alphabet City. This is the show that covers everything related to Alphabet Inc. Alphabet owns lots of companies like Loon, X, and of course, Google. I'm your guide, Ayaz Akhtar, and you are the fantabulous audience. Today we're talking about Waymo charging for rides, new Androids, your comments, and more. But first up, Samsung's plans to Galaxy Gateway. Okay, let's focus on the future. Bloomberg has a detailed report on Samsung's upcoming Galaxy S10. Similar to other reports, Bloomberg says Samsung is working on three Galaxy S10 models. The Galaxy S10 would have an OLED screen with an in-screen fingerprint sensor. There would be nearly no bezel on the top and bottom of the phone. Bloomberg says the front camera is, quote, visible and tucked under the screen, end quote. That's some interesting wording to describe the front-facing camera. No mention of a notch. It suggests Samsung may have a hole in the display. Take a look at these images of what leaker Ice Universe says are renders of Samsung's A8. Maybe that's what the S10 will have too. On the back, there should be three cameras. Let's talk about the other models. Bloomberg says Samsung is working with Verizon on a 5G version. A low-end model would ditch the curved screen for a flat display. This model may or may not have an in-screen fingerprint sensor. All of that sounds very interesting. The worst bit of news in the report is Samsung messing around with a prototype S10 that kills off the headphone jack. As I know that Samsung obeys everything I say, Samsung, don't do it. Of course, there is even more Samsung news. The same report has lots of info about Samsung's foldable phone. Apparently, its code name is Winner. That's quite the name, plenty of pressure there. Obviously, we don't have any images of Winner, but we do have this promo video from Samsung. Watch that while I yammer on. Bloomberg says there are two styles that Samsung is tinkering with. One is longer horizontally, the other is longer vertically. The one with the longer vertical display is currently winning out with developers and designers. Winner would open up like a flip phone. The unfolded display uses a film which may not be as glossy as other displays. In testing, the phone survived being folded more than 200,000 times. If and when the folding screen cracks, it, quote, shatters like dried paper, end quote, whatever that means. When folded shut, there's a four inch display that is usable for apps. Samsung is also working with Google on a customized version of Android for the phone. What does this thing weigh? Over 200 grams. That's around the same weight as the Galaxy Note 9. It's over 40 grams heavier than the Galaxy S9. To keep winter light, the battery size might have to be reduced. Samsung, don't do it. Also, technical issues won't allow winter to have an in-screen fingerprint sensor. We could see the Flexi phone, at least a concept drawing, as soon as Samsung's developer conference in November. Onwards to Android Avenue. The OnePlus 6T is official. It's got top tier specs without a top tier price. The 6T ranges from around $550 to $630. The base model has 128 gigabytes of storage with six gigabytes of RAM. <clears throat> Take that, Pixel 3. The mid-range 6T at $580 has the same storage, but eight gigabytes of RAM. If you max out everything, you get 256 gigs of storage with eight gigabytes of RAM. All 6T models run the latest version of Android. They all carry a Snapdragon 845 processor inside. They all have an in-screen fingerprint sensor that worked pretty well. CNET's Lin Law said it would be nice if the sensor worked faster and took up a larger area on the 6T. All 6T models ditched the headphone jack as was previously announced, but there is a USB-C dongle included. Enjoy that. Prelim battery tests showed the 6T could survive around 16 hours when continuously playing back video while on airplane mode. Oh, and the 6T will be available at T-Mobile in the US. Let's switch gears to another phone. The reviews for Red's Hydrogen One phone are out. A lot of sites are saying the same thing about its holographic screen. Yep, there's a 3D effect like a Nintendo 3DS, but it's not great. Keep in mind that the footage you're seeing right now does not exactly match what you would see in real life. The Hydrogen One can also shoot video and photos with a 3D effect. The problem is sharing that content isn't easy unless you're sending those pics or vids to another person with a red phone. Let's go to Waymo Way. There's a new report from the Financial Times that says Waymo is planning to charge customers for rides. As you know, Waymo is running tests in a number of markets. Its early rider program allows people to be shuttled in the company's self-driving cars. 
During an investor's call, the CFO of Waymo said the company is looking into commercialization of the trial program. Apparently, some customers are already paying for rides. Waymo's CEO told CNET's Roadshow that the company could charge for rides for perhaps getting your destination to foot the bill as a form of advertising. I look forward to the self-driving future. Best of luck to every company that's working on this project. On to Uptown Updates. The fine folks over at XDA Developers found evidence that Google could be working on a subscription service for Google Play. One developer was messing with the Play Store app and found code mentioning something called Play Pass. Combine that with a survey sent by Google that said the following. Imagine your app store has a subscription that offers hundreds of dollars worth of apps and games for a monthly fee. How well does Pass describe this service? Hmm, what could that mean? We'll all find out together. On to Comment Cove. This is the part of the show where we shine a spotlight on the most amazing audience in the world. You guys. Last week, we mentioned the issues plaguing the Pixel. Pictures not saving, problems with the apps not loading correctly, etc. Daniel says, I have all the problems with my Pixel 2 XL. Don't buy those phones. Stay away. Cam Bam says, I love my Pixel 3. I haven't had any problems so far. Hader says, does the Google Home Hub include an internal hub like the one in Amazon's Echo Plus, as in Smart Home Hub? That's a great question. Let's ask an expert. Take it away, Andrew Gephardt. In short, no. It doesn't have a Zigbee or a Z-Wave radio. The Amazon Echo Plus does have Zigbee. So the Google Home Hub isn't a hub in the sense of like a smart things hub in that it's bridging your small sensors to the cloud. It's more of a hub like a control center. But it does have Bluetooth, so right now if you have certain GE smart bulbs, you can set them up using the Google Home Hub, but that's it. Thanks to everyone for writing in this week. Over 250 comments, and yes, I still read every single one of them. If you've enjoyed your stay in Alphabet City, please like and subscribe. I'm Aya Zaktar, and I'll see you online. One more bit of news, if you've got a Roku, Google Assistant support is rolling out right now. Make sure your Roku is updated, then head on over to your Google Home app. Link your Roku account to home, and you should be good to go. Also, what's up, Chancellor? <laughs>